Hello and welcome to the Tea Party Hardy channel. We are glad to have you here. Thanks for stopping by. If you enjoy this video and want to click the like button, that would be wonderful. If you want to subscribe and join our family, we'd love to have you do that too. All right, let's see what's going on today. We need to talk about the ethics of having children in a warming world. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, nonprofits and ethicist are now publicly addressing questions about procreation in the age of climate change. All right, if you wonder what this video is going to be about, we're going to this is this is the kind of story in Vox that you could really tear apart in a million different directions. We're going to keep it limited to a few, but more than normal. So let's dive in, shall we? Let's take a, word, a look at the words climate change. If you know what climate is, you know it has to be changing in order for it to be climate change. So first things first, climate change is a redundant term. If you don't have change, you don't have climate. So that's an interesting use of words, because remember, it used to be global warming, and they kind of go back and forth with it a little bit in here. Let's see what it says inside the story. In a recent Instagram live stream from her kitchen, Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Democrat of New York, raised a taboo dimension of climate change. Few politicians would dare touch. Basically, there's a scientific consensus that the lives of children are going to be very difficult. And it does lead, I think, young people to have a legitimate question. Is it okay to still have children? And here the author says, she said, uh, for those of you that teach English or respect the English language, it should say she asked. But that's a different discussion for a different video. All right, so imagine that, that scientists have decided that children's lives are going to be difficult. That's funny. There was a guy about 2,000 years ago, and he said the same thing. In this world, there will be tribulations. You can look him up. His birthday's on Dece or his birthday celebrated on December 25th. Yeah, he, he mentioned that there would be difficulties in life, too. So it's not a new concept that life is going to be hard, even for children. But Ocasio-Cortez was voicing genuine concern for many young prospective parents today, probably should say progressive parents, who can plainly see that climate change is already here it's always been here. That's what climate means, that it's changing. Is this author really under the idea that the weather is the exact same today as it was during the Little Ice Age? Or under one of the larger ice ages? Oh, and for, if you didn't know, feel free to look it up. We're still in an ice age. Right now, planet Earth is still in an ice age. I know it doesn't get reported much, but we are. So if we're warming, that means we're leaving the ice age. Okay, fine, but we haven't left it yet. We are still deep within an ice age currently. All right, where'd we leave off here? Is already here, and its worst effects are still to come. Yeah, that's the funny thing about these doomsayers. It's always still to come. You can go back in the literature literally a hundred years now, and you can find out over and over again, the world's going to end in 10 years. And I'm talking from the climate folks that the world's going to end in 10 years, it's going to end in 50 years. How many 10 years do we have to have to go? It's, it's not going to play out that way. It's just not. Al Gore has said over and over that the world's going to end in 10 years. Uh, that was like 20, 30 years ago. Ted Danson said it in the 80s. I mean, it goes on and on and on. Um, yeah, still to come, always still to come. That's kind of a good thing that it's still to come. Live it up while you can. These anxieties are beginning to appear in pop culture. They've been in pop culture watch Netflix. They've been complaining about the weather since the 70s. It just used to be an ice age, because we are in an ice age. Let's see, anyways. They were a major theme in the 2018 film First Reformed. Raise your hand if you've seen that movie. Bueller? Bueller? Anyone? Anyone? Alright, so let's look down here. As we learned from climate scientists in several recent bracing reports, I love her adjectives. A child born today will be living in a planet are living on a planet that's likely to be dramatically warmer by the end of the century. Really? What's dramatically warmer? Let's find out. We've already experienced one degree Celsius on average of warming since the pre-industrial times. Wow! Dramatic! One degree! I know it's Celsius, which is about two and a half degrees in Fahrenheit. And we're currently on track to reach as much as four degrees by 2100. And now she switches back to Fahrenheit because that is not four degrees Celsius. And that is the maximum 
most scientific reports of the people, the scientists that are into this whole thing with their models, because they're future seeking, it's two degrees. So she's hyping it. She's doubling the hype, and she's also converting it to Fahrenheit to make that happen. Oh, let's see. Now, this is this is where it gets fun. Over and over, you hear the people say, remember, weather is not climate, and climate is not weather. Now she's going to quote a bunch of weather examples. One degree of warming has already delivered rising sea levels. Deadly heat waves. Is she talking about the 1930s Dust Bowl? Wetter hurricanes. Wetter hur What does that mean, wetter hurricanes? Hur <laughs> How do, seriously, what is a wetter hurricane? That hurricane was awfully dry. Well, if it's dry, we call it a dust devil. Droughts. Costlier disasters. That's because there's more people and more building in FEMA, at least in America. Bigger wildfires. Oh, no. Go back to the 90s and check out the wildfires in the 90s. And you can blame those babies straight up on Smokey the Bear. Look it up. Smokey the Bear is responsible for more large wildfires than any other thing in American history. And more illnesses. Uh, okay, so illness, okay, whatever. She's got a blue and I gotta love her for having the blue. To name a few of the impacts. She's blaming all these on the temperature changing. So clearly young people have good reason to be worried and not just for themselves but their future families. Okay, I'm not going to read the whole article. It's, it's really long, and it just it makes me go in a million different directions. Here's what I want to get over with you guys, for those of you that are interested. So global warming versus global cooling. If it gets hotter, does it make it harder to farm? It can. It can make it harder to farm. But guys, look at the other direction. Would you rather farm in snow or in the heat? Good luck farming in the snow. Ice ages suck. And this is something that's so important. We're talking about the difference in science here between adaptation, which is how humans have survived this long and every other species has survived this long, is through adaptation, or believing in scientists who are saying that they can actually change the weather to make it cooler. That's what they're saying. They're saying, do this, do this, do this to prevent global warming, which means they're promising to change the weather and make it cooler. Where Where is this coming from that scientists believe they can actually control the weather? Really? Come on. We, we You've got the choice between how do we adapt, how do we survive in the new circumstance if it gets hotter. Look, I lived in Phoenix for a long time. It's nasty hot in Phoenix. And, you know, we invented air conditioning. That's what you do. But the idea is you adapt and you survive. You don't go around telling everybody you're going to change the weather. But that's where we're at now. People are saying change the weather. Next idea that I want to talk about with this whole idea of having babies or not having babies based on the temperature. The article tilts towards not having the children, which is hilarious because I think it's fair to, to assume, presume even in this case, that the author's a lefty and believes in socialist societies. Socialism doesn't work without babies. Socialism is a pyramid scheme. The old are paid for by the young. If you don't have young, you don't get to pay for the old. It's a problem throughout planet Earth now. There are not enough young people to pay for all of the social programs for the old people. It's America, it's Japan, it's Canada. I said that on purpose. It's any country that dabbles in socialism, you've built the pyramid scheme, baby. And the only way it's going to work is if you keep getting new people in your country, preferably through babies. And they're not. People are not making the babies that they used to. They're just not cranking them out like they used to. So I just find it ironic that she's arguing against having babies and she wants socialism. You can't have one without the other. I'm just going off on a lot of stuff on this article because it, it, it pushes out a lot. But I'd say in closing, for a woman to complain about having babies because of the temperature of the earth is really... What do you think about it? I think you understand how I feel about it. What do you think about it? Uh, thanks for checking in. If you liked the video and you found it interesting and you want to share it, you feel free to go ahead and do that. And we look forward to having you back again, probably for a lot more structured than this one, but it just kind of got on my craw and I just wanted to take advantage of it. Okay, have a good day. Bye.